everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Heather Lindsay and I'm super excited today about the topic I'm talking about. Now I have not been posting as much lately <laughs> because I have been so busy but it's for good reason. I'm now eight months pregnant with our third baby. So this is Roman. I give birth in nine weeks. So I've been really busy just trying to get his room together. And then also I have a new book that's coming out on May 25th called The Pressure Trap. So I'm super excited about that. And I have my big Pinky Promise Conference that's almost sold out. And that's PinkyPromiseConference.com. So I have been slammed. But when I was in my quiet time yesterday, I was studying this. And <clears throat> it just really challenged me. And I just figured it'd be great to hop on here and just talk to you guys about it. Today we're talking about loving your enemies. Now, I think it's easy to just hear that. We've heard it since we were little, right? Love your enemies, bless those who hurt you. But I want to know, I want to know what happens when like it almost feels like your gut is ripped out of you. It's like that person really hurt you. That person talked about you. That person bashed you. Like they came for your whole life. What is your response to the, towards them? That employee throws you under the bus. That spouse says something to you that hurts you so bad that pierces you. What is your response going to be towards the hurt that you feel? That family member just said that thing that pushed that button that took you to a place that you didn't want to be in. What do you do? What is your response? I want to look at, I want to look at this. So um, 1 Peter 2 and 20. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you're beaten for doing wrong. And this is just the proper context. This is Jesus actually talking to the slaves at that time period. Um, but if you suffer for doing good and endure patiently, God is pleased with you. For God called you to do good, even if that means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He's your example, so you must follow his steps. Verse 22, he never sinned. He never, ever deceived anybody. He did not retaliate when he was insulted. Can we just hang out right here? It's so easy to go online and see something maybe that somebody said about you, subliminal or directly towards you. But what do you do with that information? What do you do when people are insulting you? Are, what, what is your response when you're sitting at work and that co-worker comes for your whole life in salvation? What do you do when you are insulted? What are you doing when you're driving down the street and somebody comes by and just gives you that middle finger? What do you do when, when your husband says that thing, you know, that one thing that pushes that one button that really just, just hurts you? What do you do when that friend that you thought was your friend for all these years insults you or talks badly about you? Jesus never retaliated. It just makes me think, you walked this earth for 33 years and you never, ever retaliated? Like, I just want you to think about that. Think about every time you've clapped back, every time that you've popped back at somebody when you, you know, you don't like the way they talk to you or you don't like the way they did you and you ain't going to do me wrong like that because you don't know who I am. Like, it's like, it's almost like our flesh constantly wants to respond to everybody. And Jesus is saying, Jesus is like, I didn't retaliate when I was insulted. He did not threaten revenge when he suffered. Isn't that what we do? When somebody hurts us, we want to hurt them back. When somebody does us wrong and does us dirty, it's like, we are ready. I'm going to threaten you. I'm going to revenge. I wish I'm giving you ultimatum. I wish you would talk to me like that. And the thing is, many of us are asking God for our gifts and our talents. And what have you called me to do, Lord? And lead me by your spirit, Lord. Show me what to do. But when it comes down to it, we're not loving anybody. <laughs> we love who we choose to love. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe we should have boundaries and standards in our relationships. But I believe that God has placed certain people in your life to develop your faith, to develop you in so many ways. My husband, for example, the Lord has placed him to be a thorn in my side <laughs> and vice versa. I'm a thorn in his side too. But we develop each other to be who God has called us to be. It's a healthy thorn. Don't get me wrong. It's not crazy. But it, it, I get better in my marriage. And you might be thinking, Heather, well, I ain't getting better in my marriage. But are you overcoming evil with good? Are you not retaliating? Are you not seeking revenge? Are you loving unconditionally? So many times we look at everybody else and we place the blame on them of what they need to do, but we refuse to look at ourselves. Jesus tells us to love our enemies and we don't like to hear that. We like to skip past that. So he didn't retaliate. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body 
on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and live for what is right. And by his wounds, you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you are turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your soul. And if, I, if we flip over to First Peter 3 and 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. What? That is what God has called you to do and he will grant his blessing. When's the last time you prayed for your enemies? When's the last time you really, really prayed for that person that you know don't like you? I mean, granted, you know, we forgive, we do all those different things, but I mean, I've, I've learned. I've learned to release people and pray for them and pray that God blesses them. And, I, and I've asked the Lord, Lord, let, make it real in my heart. Like, I don't want to walk around with unforgiveness hoping somebody else would die. And the thing about unforgiveness is this. It leaves this spot and it can, makes you continue to charge future people for what people in your past did to hurt you. The people that are in your life and the people that God brings into your life, they're not all going to hurt you. But the thing what unforgiveness does is it makes you hold on to the past and you charge everybody from your your future because of your past. No, I give everybody a clean slate. I do. I give people a clean slate. If you screw it up, then hey, honey, you did that. You did that. You did that yourself. But I mean, I've learned to just give people a clean slate. I can't. I don't want anybody to charge me for people that hurt them in the past. And, and that's happened before and it hurts. This is what God has called you to do. So and he will grant you his blessing. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. It's so easy to speak evil towards somebody that has hurt us. It's so it's so easy to just bash somebody. And don't get me wrong, I'm not standing there like, oh, I'm so perfect. I've never talked about anybody. No, it's like I'm constantly working out my salvation saying, okay, is what I'm saying going to bring glory to the Lord? Okay, probably not. All right, am I venting to the right person about this? Are we being solution-minded or are we being petty-minded? Let's just keep it real. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. This is a part that really just got me. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. And his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face to all of those that do evil. The Lord turns his face to all of those that do evil. Okay, God, you can't be turning your face towards me. Like, I want to make sure that I'm, like, in line, like, doing what you need me to do. Like, I need you not to turn your face towards me. Like, I need, I need, I want your heart. Like, you're my whole life. Like, you can't turn your face from me. But the thing is, there's a way that he can turn his face from me. And that is for all of those that do evil. So if you are constantly saying that you love Jesus, you know, you go to church, all these other things, but you're constantly pursuing evil. And it's like, why are my prayers getting answered? Why ain't, why ain't this stuff happening to me? It's like... Is God's face even turned towards you? Or do you even care about suffering or loving your enemies? We hear the word suffering in church and we're like, I ain't got to suffer. But it's like, no, suffering, we get to share and partake in what Jesus has gone through. And I don't know about y'all, but the past couple months I've been tested, like hardcore. And I know what it is. It's always a preparation for whenever I have a conference. I just get hit up really bad with tests and trials. But I know exactly what this is. And I rejoice in suffering because I know it's drawing me closer to the Father. I know it's only temporary and I know that I'm going to grow and I'm going to mature in the midst of it. So throughout this time, I'm just intentional. Like, let me guard my heart. Let me guard my, guard my ear gate, my eye gate. What am I saying? What am I doing? Who's around me? Everybody can't be with you. Everybody's not going where God has taken you. But just because they're not going where God has taken me doesn't mean that I have to hate them. It means that I get to love them, forgive them and release them. But at the same time, it's like, are you loving your enemies? I want you to think. I just want you to think about it right now. Because if you want to be who God has called you to be, you want to walk in your purpose, you want to do all these things, you want to operate in the prophetic, but you mean is all get out. You gossip about everybody. Nobody can talk to you because they know everybody is going to know their business. Let's be intentional. Let's live like Jesus would. He did not retaliate. He forgave and he kept it moving. And he did what he was supposed to do on this earth. And that's what I inspire to be like so I just want to share that with you guys I love y'all I wish I could like group hug everybody I miss y'all um but hopefully after I drop this baby <laughs> I can start recording a lot more often but um I'm gonna try as much as I can until I give birth and then after I give birth I'm gonna be recording and I'm gonna have the baby I'm gonna show y'all 
our little sweet Roman. Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, I love you guys. Make sure you subscribe below. And if you've not registered for my conference, what you doing? PinkyPromiseConference.com. It's gonna be lit, it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be amazing, all right? I love you guys. <laughs>